Major League Baseball. Uh, they are telling the players to sign the CBA by next Monday, and that would be February, what, 28th, I believe, uh, or they are canceling games. And that, that doesn't mean the season. What that means is we're going to shorten the season, and you ain't going to get a paycheck. We won't have 162 if we're, not, if we're not signed by Monday. Exactly. And every one of those games that you miss, you don't get a paycheck for. So that's, that could be interesting, right? Now, I don't know that that's going to change anything because I believe that the players – uh, for anybody that hasn't paid attention to what's going on with the MLB, uh, the MLBPA and Major League Baseball, the owners, uh, they are trying to come to terms on a new collective bargaining agreement by Monday, and I don't know that it's going to happen. Uh, a spokesperson said a deadline is a deadline. Missed games are missed games. Salary will not be paid for those games. This is interesting. Uh, you know, we talked about this quite a bit, you know, when the pandemic started and then last season, and now here we are getting ready for the 2022 season, and and they still don't exactly have this thing figured out. And and they got into a fight a couple of years ago about this, and now they're, they're kind of going back and forth squabbling about this one as well. Do you see any way that they get this thing sorted out by Monday? No, zero. I agree. I agree. I don't think they care if they miss games. I think it is much more important for them to make sure that they get a deal that is uh, better for them than the one that they currently have. And it's not like they've got a bad deal, but still. I don't know all of the the nuts and bolts. I know the majority of the argument is is for the last several years, salaries in the uh, Major League Baseball have gone down. Okay, They're not going up. They're going down when everything else is going up. Um, I don't know how much of that is the owners really took it on the chin for the COVID year. And so they're not signing as big of deals going forward to try to recoup some of that in the short term. I don't, I I can't, I can't explain some of this. I haven't gotten too far in the weeds of it. I do know this. I do know the arbitration rules are absolutely ridiculous. I know that they're completely insane. Um, Being able to own a player from a rookie year for the first six years uh, and control his clock is, Insane. Um, the Red Sox and the Red Sox owner is one of one of the best owners in baseball. He's he's fighting like hell to get a deal done. He just wants to play ball. Um, he he, you know, they had a, I couldn't tell you the name of the guy. I probably should have known this. Um, but a, but a fair to middling young reliever. Okay, he's going to be a star. All right, he's going to be a star relief pitcher. He's supposed to be he's projected to be. Got called up and down. I don't know. Five different times from from minor leagues to the majors last year for the Red Sox bullpen, and but the the only reason he kept getting called up and sent back down was to save money. And at the end of the year, he made like one hundred ten thousand dollars because he never stayed in majors long enough to to qualify for whatever it was at his stint or whatnot. Like rules like that have to go away. Like if you're good enough to be here, we want the best the fans and the right thing for the sport, for the meritocracy of everything, the best players should play. That's it. That's all. And if you're intentionally not playing somebody to save money on that player or maintain control over that player, then 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 that's not best for the sport. We need to change those rules. Also, owning a player for so long, for so little, is – it's just really tough because it's the prime of their career. Pete Alonzo has won two home run derbies. Now, Pete Alonzo's not the greatest baseball player in the world. But Pete Alonzo is a pretty good, pretty good baseball player, okay, for the Mets. He's made more money in his winnings for the home run derby contest than he has in his career in the MLB. That's a problem, okay? Agreed. This guy's a big enough star to be on your home run derby stage. He's won it two years in a row. And the, the million-dollar payout in him winning it is more money than he's made in his entire career playing with you. Like, we have to find a way to where if these guys are – I'm not saying, you know, you know you've got to – every rookie contract is good in every sport. But none of them are six years long. Agreed. None of them are six years long. Yeah, it's, and that's, it's just, that's yeah, the problem. It's too long. You own them for too long. I agree with you. Uh, The the deal on this says the sides remain far apart on a new agreement. The union is likely to pull expanded playoffs off the table if players are not paid a full season salary. 
according to sources familiar with the union's thinking. Uh, and it says that the players have, have never acknowledged the deadline. Uh, opening day is supposed to be March 31st. Uh, I don't know that that's going to... I don't know that that's going to hit. Uh, It says the news came after five hours of negotiations on Wednesday uh, that included vigorous dialogue, according to sources familiar with the talks. And, you know, basically they're talking about salary and uh, minimum salaries, what they're going to start at, et cetera. Uh, The union wants $775,000 next season. The league is offering $640,000 with $10,000 raises each year after that. I mean, it's... There's so much, and they are so far apart on these numbers that I think it's certainly going to take longer than Monday, and this thing may go into the season. So we'll we'll see what ends up happening. But yeah, this stuff's crazy. Yeah, I hate. I really hate this too because I mean, I was looking forward to this baseball season. I'm an old man. I love baseball. I'm not going to stop. It was the first love of my life, and 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 it's never going to change. Um, and I also just had massive desires to go to Boston. Which, if they ever start playing games, I can still do that. I just need I, that's not a you know women a prayer thing. Like I need to plan this shit out. So oh, I need yeah. to know what the season looks like. I need to know what the schedule looks like. So. Well, yeah, because they'll have to they'll have to basically redo the calendar. Like it. Yeah, <laughs> they'll, think, they'll have to redo so. the whole I don't think thing. they're just going to lock games off the front end. Now I might be wrong. They might just do that and just say, "All right, well, we're starting on this date now, and that's now new opening day." And every game before that, all got, you know, just canceled, wiped off the books. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.